Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be creating a look for you inspired by one of the looks that I did on myself several years ago, for which I shall caption here. Lots of gold, lots of bronze, lots of lash, lots of lip liner and lots of contour. It's a very full on look. However, for this look, I shall be darkening my skin considerably. My skin is, of course, very, very fair, but I shall be darkening my skin to look more tanned. I never wear fake tan or darken my foundation ever, but I shall be doing so for today's film. I certainly don't have any issues with lightening or darkening skin for editorial purposes or for industry purposes. It is certainly done within industry. Because I shall be darkening my skin substantially, I shall be taking the foundation I'm going to use onto the ear slightly and onto the neck, as I intend the coloration to be all one consistent tone. To prime and moisturize my skin, first of all, I shall be going in with Bobbi Brown's Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And I absolutely love this product. It's a fantastic primer under makeup. And I'm just going to apply a very liberal layer of that to the skin using a Space NK foundation brush. It has quite a strong scent, this primer. It smells very like Turkish Delight, which is one of my favorite sweets. Within the previous look, if I recall correctly, I used MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Foundation in the shade NC30. And that is what I'm going to use here today. So I'm just going in with that first of all. As you can see, it's drastically darker than my natural skin tone. I'm just sticking that on the ears. I must admit, I find this a little daunting, the prospect of going from having a moon tan to a sun tan. Imagine how awfully tragic it would be if this was irrevocable. And now I'm just going to go in and buff all of that through and correct the texture with a Furless CB1 brush. I'm just taking a tiny bit of that foundation on the brush and stippling it all in. Now, because this foundation hasn't given me the desired coverage that I want, I'm going to go in with some of Estee Lauder's Double Wear Maximum Cover in the shade 03 Creamy Vanilla. This is my all-time favorite foundation. However, the shade range is not particularly great. I think there's only about six or eight shades, but it's a very high coverage formula. It's a little bit lighter than the foundation that we've gone in with already. But what I'm going to do is just use it to lift the coverage in certain areas. However, even though the Double Wear Maximum Cover foundation shade range is considerably limited, I absolutely love the foundation. It just goes on so easily. And now I'm going to go in and cream contour from my custom palette. And I shall be using both these two tones here. The lighter one is Supercover Ultimate Foundation in the shade 22, and the darker is Supercover Ultimate Foundation in the shade 11. And I don't think I shall use that much of the 11, but definitely the 22. I'm just going to cut in with that and blend it in. All of the tones that I'm using today are going to be warm tones, and I'm stippling that in. I'm not actually buffing it, just stippling it in on top. And this will just provide us with a base as we will be going in with additional bronzer. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that around the forehead, as I do have quite a large forehead. It almost has the same mass as Russia. And I'm going to connect it slightly into the eye so that we have a base for our lift. Now it may seem as if I've been very aggressive, but I'm not actually. This brush is incredibly soft. I am being slightly vigorous, but I do want it to be absolutely seamless so that we have no harsh lines amongst the sea of orange. And then I'm going to take the side of the brush and contour the nose ever so slightly. The way that I contour my nose is a little bit different. I don't normally contour my nose, but if I do, this is the technique that I use. And I bring the two lines as close to together as I possibly can, just to really slim down the nose, I'm digging it into the socket slightly. And I'm going to blend that in with a Fallis CB1 brush, just very delicately patting it. And I don't want it to be too obvious, so I'm blending it out as much as I can. I'm just blending the edges. And now with a clean version of the same brush which I used to contour, which is a Charles Fox 8146405 brush. And then just taking this lighter tone here, and what I'm doing is applying that as our under eye concealer. And this shade is by Supercover. It's one of their ultimate foundations. What I'm doing is just applying that as our concealer to highlight and brighten this area. Now, because of the kind of nose that I have, I call this section the shaft, the long part of the nose, and then I call this the tip. The shaft on my nose is very, very thin, whereas the tip is considerably wider. Now, I have no concern about the thinness of the shaft, but the tip is very, very fat. So the way that I correct that is by actually widening the shaft and thinning the tip. So my nose is almost shaped like a triangle. What we want to do is flip that triangle upside down 
And what I do by doing that is actually applying highlighter quite, quite widely at the top, and then I pull it down the nose, thinning it as we come down to the tip. And I don't take highlighter all the way to the tip. And then to further create the illusion of slimness, I take the highlighter tone right up the side of the nose, right up to where we contoured a moment ago, and paint alongside it, and then cut across. So you see a sharp cut there, which then brings the nose in. And I take that highlighter tone just down here and round, and I pull it upwards and out. And as you can see, by just applying that technique of using the highlighter tones just to nip the nose inward, it is a much more effective technique at slimming and thinning a nose as opposed to applying darker tones. So we use our lighter tones to cut and slim the nose and then blend all of that in. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that highlighter tone just around the mouth where there's a tiny bit of shadow just to brighten that area. And setting through only the areas that I have applied highlighter to with some of Inglot's Mattifying Loose Powder on a MAC Cosmetics 138 brush. And just making sure the eyebrow area is set through as well with a Zoba 114 brush. And I'm going to take a Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40 on a MAC 263 and then begin sketching in the eyebrows. And I want the eyebrows to be quite harsh and quite penciled looking. So that's the eyebrows more or less done. I'm going to come back to them later on to apply a little bit of powder in them, probably a tone slightly darker than what I've gone in with, but once we have completed the rest of the eye look. Now for the eyes, I'm going to create a very dark socket and then cut in with concealer and then apply pigment on top of it. But first of all, I'm going to apply some of Urban Decay's powder eyeshadow in the shade Buck from the Naked palette as our transition colour. I'm just going to start building up a socket first of all. And I'm not going to create too much of a wing to the eye, I'm going to keep the look quite rounded as it was originally. And to do that, you just bring your tone slightly higher in the central area of the eye and don't wing it out far too much. And I'm going to take that tone quite far into the inner corner. And now I'm applying some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Soft Brown on a Zova 227 and just warming that tone up and filling in this area. And I'm just taking that ever so slightly underneath the eye. And I've actually changed my mind. I'm going to wing it out ever so slightly, but not an upward wing, almost a widening wing. So it still elongates the eyes, but it's not totally uplifting. It is more broadening. I don't actually mind if that colour comes down quite far underneath the eye as well. Then I'm taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brulee, and with the same 217, just brushing that underneath the brow as a matte highlight. I will go in with the shimmer shade shortly. And now I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso, and I'm packing that into place on an Inglot 80HPS brush. What I'm first of all doing is just sketching in the socket. Even though we're going to go back in and cut in anyway, I just want to build up as much colour as possible in that area. Then taking some of the Espresso on a MAC 217, and just blending through. Going back in with the soft brown colour just to ensure seamlessness. And now I'm applying some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade La Mage, which is this beautiful blue, green, black, teal shade, like a dark turquoise, and I'm applying that on the same pencil brush from before. And I'm connecting that into the socket just ever so slightly. And with a clean Zova 227 brush, I'm just blending all of that in. Now before I go in and apply some gold pigment to the eyelids, I'm going to first of all apply this very pale shade from my customized palette. And this is the shade D406, and it is one of the Cryolan Dermacolor cream concealers and I'm just taking a very slight amount of that on a curved concealer brush. This one is unbranded, I've had it for years, but what I'm doing first of all is just cutting in a crease. I've got to be very careful with this, filling in the eyelid. And a great way I've been able to do this very well is to actually look down in a mirror, which gives you a gauge of where you're placing the product. Now I don't necessarily need it to be too neat at this point, as the product I'm going to go in with anyway is so finely milled that you will see speckles of it through the socket. But I just want a very sharp guide on the eye, first of all. So that is the base for our pigment now applied to the eyes. Now this is the fun and beautiful, yet very messy part. And I'm going to be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Reflex Glitter in the shade 
Bronze Reflects, which is this absolutely beautiful goldeny bronze shade. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite golden products. Now I'm going to apply this with a concealer brush. This one is unbranded. However, I'm going to use one pump of MAC Fix Plus on the brush, just so that it grabs the product. And because this is a loose product, sometimes it is better to apply these facing down so that you do not get too much fallout. And as you can see, I'm just tilting my head down ever so slightly. And I'm actually going to change to a MAC 239 brush as I found the previous technique wasn't as effective. I'm just beginning to just pack that onto the eye, coating all of the concealer that we have applied and really just pack it on and start to build up the product. And I don't really mind if there's fall down as the whole look is going to be quite golden and sparkly. Now I'm not very keen on the immediate harshness of the crease. So I'm just going to brush around the edge of the crease just to soften the edge. I'm going back in with the 217 that we had our espresso on just to soften that in. And if you have any excessive fall down, you can go back in with your powder brush from before and just lift any of that product. So that is the eyes almost complete. I'm just going to go in and apply some gel eyeliner. And this is the Inglot's AMC Gel Eyeliner in the shade 77. And I'm actually going to draw a very harsh graphic cat eye. So I've drawn in quite a graphic, sharp cat eye, and I've lifted it more at the outer corner so it cuts right across the eye. I didn't want something that was following of my eye shape as I wanted to lift the eyes as I did in the original look. And I took the gel eyeliner quite far down underneath the eye, but to soften the harshness of the line, I'm going to go back in with some of the Limerge color and just blend it into the black gel eyeliner that we have applied on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush. And then taking a clean Zoba 227 brush, just soften what we have applied, blending it ever so slightly just to ensure seamlessness. I'm going in and curling eyelashes. Then I'm going to apply some of the Balm's What's Your Type mascara, of course. What I'm doing first of all is just blackening the eyelashes before we go in with false eyelashes. And I'm going to go in and apply a set of custom cut false eyelashes. So that is the eyes complete. I've gone in and applied false lashes. And of course the eyelash glue dries clear, but I went over the top of it with a tiny bit of bourgeois liquid eyeliner. Now I'm going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics Matte Bronze and use this as my contour. I'm really gently sculpting, really just flicking that color upward and brushing it over very, very softly, very, very faintly. But I like contours to look very seamless. So I apply it quite loosely and quite liberally to the cheekbone, but working it upward rather than underneath the cheekbone. I find that it just lifts and sculpts the face perfectly, certainly my own features. Of course, contouring must be applied suiting to your own features. I'm just going to apply that to the forehead. And you can really get away with quite a lot of contour and bronzer on the more tan sort of skin tones. And since my skin is tanned today, I'm going to apply quite a lot of bronzer. And I'm just connecting up from the eye, sort of swishing it outward. Tiny bit of it on the jaw. I don't normally do this, but I just want to keep the tone and the hue very consistent. There's definitely an equilibrium between how fascinated I am by this and how strange I also find it. So that more or less completes all the sculpting work within the face. Now for blusher, I was going to go in with something that's pinky and I might, depending on how I feel, but I'm first of all going to apply this sleek makeup, Blush by Three in the shade Lantern, which is this matte orange here. Now this is a fantastic tone for warming up any look. And I'm just going to apply that on a Zova 126. What this will do, I'll just almost connect blusher and the bronzer together. As you can see, that just lifts the color ever so slightly. And I'm only going to apply a little bit of it. It just lifts the face. And then I'm going to take this sleek makeup face form and apply the blusher from this palette on the same brush. This is a really pretty pinky shade and it has slight golden reflex in it. So it's going to look really pretty on the cheekbones. And I've been slightly excessive with it, but I kind of think, well, I'm near an orange anyway, so I might as well. But I always go back in and just mute everything down with our powder brush from before. Now, before I wasn't necessarily that keen on the eyebrows, but I actually quite like them as they are. And I think I'm going to leave them. Now for highlighter, I'm definitely going to apply the Balm's Mary Luminizer highlighter. I'm going to apply it. And I'm applying it on a Wayne Goss number two brush. I'm just going to apply a little bit of that to the chin, a little bit to the cupid bow. You can always go back in and mute down whatever you've applied. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that to the forehead, just to add some sheen, and then quite a lot of it to the center of the nose. And I always like a little bit of shine here. 
and then I'm going to apply a little bit of it just to the inner part of the eye. One technique when using highlighter or shimmer tones is by applying it to an area. When you start to buff it, it can actually become more shiny. Because I don't want to apply too much product in that area, I'm just buffing it in. You can actually go back in with your blusher brush from before and just connect everything together, ensuring seamlessness. No, I couldn't quite resist. So I'm going to go in and apply even more highlighter. And this is Inglot's Sparkling Dust in the shade 02. So being able to try them out on myself is definitely very interesting. Now for lips, I'm going to go in with some of L'Oreal's lip pencil in the shade Rosewood. I had to really rummage around my archive to be able to find this color. It's very similar to Spice by MAC Cosmetics. It's definitely got a slight more raspberry tone to it than Spice. And I'm obviously going to overdraw the lips with this kind of look. I think that's sacrosanct. With the lips now overlined, I'm now going to go in and apply lipstick. Originally, I used Beauty UK's lipstick in the shade Chelsea. However, today I really like the slightly pinky look on the lips already. So I'm going to go in and apply MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Saint Germain, as it's a perfect Barbie color. And I kind of felt like a change from nudes. I don't want to apply it too heavily. I want there to still be a slight ombre on the lip. And I'm just taking a slight amount of Elamascus lipstick in the shade Live, which is a slightly lighter tone. And I'm just blotting that onto the lips. And the lip liner and the lipstick have merged very nicely together. And I'm now going to blot the lips ever so slightly as I feel I've applied a little bit too much. And one great technique is just to take a little bit of tissue paper, bite into it. And when you do that, fold the edges up. And that just removes all the excess product on the lip. And I'm now just going to even out the neck tone and apply additional foundation to areas that require tanning down, just so that it all looks really seamless. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shimmer to certain areas on the neck. And I'm just going to contour the neck ever so slightly, just so that it doesn't all look like such a flat shape. There's definitely a stark color difference between my regular skin tone and that of the painted on one. It's definitely very interesting to try out these looks, but I don't think I will be tanning that often. I'm very fond of my very fair skin. I definitely enjoy recreating some of my older looks, looks that I did when I was a lot younger. It's a very glamorous look, very bronzed look, very golden look, very Barbie actually. It can also be worn with the hair up, which is a much more classic take on the look. So that more or less completes the look. I very much enjoy creating this look, even though I don't think I will be tanning myself anytime soon, or certainly not for a long time. I definitely enjoy creating this look and using the color palette for which that I did. And I think it can actually be really quite fun trying out different styles and different looks, and I definitely had a lot of fun creating this look. I very much hope that you found today's film either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.